What's up everyone? My name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer and today I'm going to show you how to create a responsive overlay component in Framer. First thing I'm going to do is create my overlay. So I'm going to go to this get started button here and I am going to scroll all the way up to the top on my right side and you can see there's a section that says overlays. If I click the plus icon, you can see that the editor view changes. There's also this little section here that says overlay. So what that means is that you have an overlay triggered and you can design things that will show up on top of the screen. And then on the right, you can set presets in terms of whether it fades in or out. And then if there's a background fill, whether or not it's dismissible and then enter and exit transitions. There's also this thing called Z index, which moves the modal forward or backwards if you're thinking about it in 3D, but we're not gonna cover that today. So what I am first going to do is I am going to click layout and then I'm gonna to go to rows and then I'm going to drag a new section over here. And let's set the width and height of this to be 400 pixels. We'll change the height later, but for now, let's just set it to 400 by 400. We're gonna set the padding to be 24 pixels. And then we're gonna change this gap to be 16 pixels. And then let's go ahead and add a fill. We'll have this fill be a of darker gray like this. And then let's add a 24 pixel radius. And then we're also gonna add a border. I'm going to use this preset color style that I have called divider, which is just 2B, 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 if you wanna use the hex code. And then if I hit this back arrow here, let's change the width from one pixels in width to two pixels in width. And I'm actually going to make this background color a tiny bit darker like that. Now let's go to shadows and we're going to take this zero color. We're going to change the opacity to 40% just to make it a little bit more intense. And we'll make the Y offset four pixels and we'll make the blur 16 pixels. So now I've got the background set for my overlay. I am actually going to add some text. Let's click on the text button. I'm going to type the words, get started. Let's change the weight of this to bold, and then we're gonna change the size to 20 pixels, and then we will bring in the letter spacing just a tiny bit. And then I am going to grab this, hit Command X, and then I'll go to Rows, select that, and hit Command V. And then let's set the width of this to fill rather than fit content. I'm going to take both of these frames and delete them because I don't need them anymore. And then I'm actually gonna hit Done for a second and I'm going to grab this button style that we have here and then I am going to go back to my overlay which I can do by just selecting this again. I'll select this rows section and I'll hit command V to paste that in. We'll set the width of this to fill and then we will change the color of this to be 20% opacity. And then let's take the fill color here and we'll apply it to the text. So this will be kind of our secondary CTA I'm gonna go grab this color, paste it in. And so we have this get started piece here. Let's actually remove that border. And then now I'm going to go to layout again. I'm gonna add some columns, which you could also do by hitting shift C. I will drag this in. Let's actually set the width to fill. And then I'm gonna copy this text and I'm gonna go into this column section and hit command V on my keyboard. I'm gonna type the word or and then let's change the size of this to be 14 pixels and we'll make this kind of a medium gray and then we will take both of these boxes and we will change the fill color from mixed to this divider color uh, if you don't have this style you can grab the link to the framer remix file which basically means you can take this whole file and follow along we're going to change the height to be two pixels in height and then we're gonna add a radius of two pixels just to make sure that those are rounded. You can see the width is set to fill. Let's take this or and we'll move it to the middle. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this whole column section and we'll set it to fit content. Let's also change the text here to say sign in. I'm sorry about the Grammarly overlay. I have Grammarly set up and it kind of pops over when I'm editing text here. So now I've got get started, a sign in button, an or, and below that, I'm going to add a couple input fields as well as a CTA to create an account for people that might be new to this site. So first I'll go to insert and I am going to type the word input. 
to get an input field here. And you can see right away that I've got both the input field, but I've also got this subscribe button, which I don't want. So I'm gonna to go to this ellipsis by button. I'm gonna set this to no under show, which will make it invisible. And then let's go back up to the input. We're gonna change the fill here to be an off gray that works better with our dark mode designs. And then we're gonna change the text color to white. And then let's change the opacity of this to 60% so it's a bit more visible. Let's also change the text color to white as well, just so that it, once people have filled in information, it's legible. We'll change the padding here. So on the top, it'll be 12 pixels. On the right, it'll be 16. On the bottom, it'll be 12. And on the left, it'll be 16. The last thing we'll do is change the radius to 10%, 10 pixels rather than eight. And we'll change this to fill rather than that fixed width that we had. Last thing, we're gonna change this placeholder from email to first name. And then let's go ahead and duplicate this once. And we're gonna change this to be last name. The nice thing here is that this modal stays open even when you duplicate the layer. And then finally, we'll add an email section here. So now we've got three input fields which are collecting first name, last name, and email. Finally, I will grab this button and I will paste it in one more time. Let's change this text to say create account. And then I'm going to change the color of this to be white. And I'm gonna change this background color to be 100% opacity rather than 20%. Next, I'm gonna add some text below this. You can see things are starting to bleed over. It's easily fixed if I change this to fit content. Let's add some copy here by creating an account on my Framer site. You agree to the terms of service and privacy policy. You can see this text is bleeding over, so let's change this to fill. And then I'm going to take this terms of service section and I'm gonna take the color here, grab the eyedropper and make this blue. And then I will do the same thing for the privacy policy. And then I'm gonna increase the line height a little bit like that. This is great. I can dismiss the modal if I click out of it, but one thing I want to be able to do is click a button in here and be able to dismiss it. So. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to insert and I'm gonna type the word icon. Let's type feather. I'll drag that in here. I'm gonna change the size of this to be 20 by 20, like that. And then I'll click on the word home. I'll type X and hit enter, which will make it an X icon. And then let's change this to be that white color. And then I'm gonna right click on the icon in the layers panel and I'm gonna add it to a stack. Then I'm gonna change the padding of that stack to be 20 pixels. And then let's add a fill here. And I'm gonna just duplicate the styling that I have of this input field here. And then let's change the border radius to be 10 pixels as well. And then I'm gonna take that plus the get started text. We'll add that to a stack. And I'm gonna set that to horizontally distribute rather than vertically. And let's change the height to fit content. And then to get this whole button to close the overlay, what I need to do is go to this interaction section. And if I hit plus when I'm editing an overlay, there will be a new option that appears called close overlay. So if I select this, you can see on tap, it'll close the overlay. So let's go ahead and test that out. If I hit plus, I'm gonna go to get started, got my overlay. If I hover over this click, you can see it closes it. I can also do that just by clicking anywhere outside of it. If I go back to editing my overlay, one more thing I wanna do is I wanna kind of refine the spacing a little bit here. So I'm gonna take these three sections and I'm gonna add them to a stack. And then I'm gonna change the gap to be 12 pixels. I'm gonna change the height to fit content. And then I'm gonna change this to fill. And then I'll take both of these sections, I'll add a stack. And then again, we'll change the gap to 12 pixels, change the height to fit content and the width to fill. And now if I hit done and I hit play again, when I open this up, you can see it scales up or down. I didn't like how that was scaling up and down. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this button, this divider section, both these stacks, and then I'll set the width to fixed. And that's gonna be three, set at 352. I also need to add a max width of 400 which is fixed. Let's change that to 
that. And now if I hit done and I hit play and I open this up, you'll see that I won't be able to scale this up, but the spacing is weird. So if I go to my overlay and I select this, I'm gonna make sure that it is horizontally and vertically centered. And now when I open this up, I'm able to scale it up or down. When it gets to tablet, this looks a little wonky. So let's go ahead and go over to tablet. You can see by default, Framer automatically adds this section to desktop, tablet, and mobile. So let's click on this here. And then let's make sure that this is horizontally and vertically centered like that. And then on mobile, you can see things start to bleed over a little bit. And then also this alignment changes. So let's change the width of this to be, let's change the width of this to something a little smaller. We'll say 320 pixels. And then we're going to center this. And then I'm gonna take all the contents within this. And I'm gonna change it from fixed to fill. And then I'm gonna take this section and I'm gonna make sure that the direction is horizontal rather than vertical. And then you can see everything lines up like it should. So I've got the desktop mobile modal, which is centered. I've got the tablet mobile, which is centered. And I've got the mobile modal, which is also centered. So now if I hit play and I open this up on desktop, it centers. On tablet, it centers. And on mobile, it centers. And I'm usually able to dismiss it by clicking the X button or if I open it up and just click outside, that will close it as well. So that is the basics of modals. Let's look quickly at the basics of animation. If I click on the modal and I change the ease in and ease out, I'm gonna change this to say 0.5 seconds and this to 0.5 seconds, just to illustrate what it feels like. If I hit play, I type that in, you can see there's that little animation of the actual kind of overlay. I don't like that, it's actually doesn't add very much. So let's go ahead and undo that. Hit in Command Z, and then here and hit in Command Z. What I can also do with the actual modal itself is I could add an effect, an appear effect, and I can basically have it fade in. And let's try out that. If I hit play, you'll get a nice little quick snappy fade in there. So let's go ahead and hit publish. I'm gonna click update. And now if I select this domain, I've got my site here, I'm gonna click get started and you see that modal will fade in. If I scale the viewport down, you can see it still does that same fade in. And if I bring it all the way down to mobile, same thing. And that's it. You've now created a basic modal that you can use whether you're making a tool tip or an overlay to sign in or any other things that you want to present in a dismissible state, whether it's a sidebar, a top banner announcement, etc. cetera. Uh, they're pretty easy to animate and they're really easy to make responsive. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of Framer, how to create overlays when you're working on your next website project and how to make them responsive across all different form factors that you might be working with. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe, and don't hesitate to ask any questions if you have them below. Uh, I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.